Hello guys, my name is Arik Mohamad. I'm one of the directors at Elite Activities. And currently I'm working as a clinical pharmacist at Northern Health Hospital in Melbourne. And in today's video, I'm going to uh, share a few things regarding the PBC examination. So we all know that it's a uh, well-known fact that uh, PBC is one of the world's toughest examination. And many candidates, they keep on playing this examination on uh, the first attempt, second attempt, and so on. So in this video, I'm going to share a few important basic things like why the candidates they often they fail and what are the few uh, tips and tricks how they can improve in uh, clearing the speed this examination in their uh, attempts. Well, uh, when it comes to the question that why do candidates fail in the PVC examination? Okay. So at first, before knowing about why the candidates they fail in the PVC examination, let's have a look through uh, the PVC syllabus. Okay. So here is the complete uh, syllabus for the PVC, the subjects and the percentage or the weightage for each subject. So the first one is the biomedical sciences, which carries around 15% weightage. The second one is the pharmaceutical sciences, which carries around 25% weightage. Then pharmacy practice, which carries around 50% weightage, it has got two components in it. One is the clinical sciences and the other one is the professional practice sciences. And the last one is the behavioral, social and administrative pharmacy sciences, which carries around 10% of weightage. So now let's have a look in detail about each uh, subject or the each uh, component. And uh, we'll see that uh, where the candidates, they will, uh, they will fail and why the candidates they won't emphasize on those uh, components and so on okay so here is the overall uh, percentage distribution of the subject so the first one is the pharmacy practice which carries around 50 percent the second one is the pharmaceutical sciences around 25 percent of the weightage the third one is the uh, biomedical sciences 15 percent and the last one is behavioral social and administrative pharmacy which carries around 10 percent of weightage so from this graph, it's clear that around 50% of weightage is for pharmacy practice. Okay. So when candidates, they look at this uh, graph, like when the candidates, they look at the uh, uh, syllabus or the blueprint of the PVC. So everyone, they will think that, okay, if we focus on the pharmacy practice, if we focus mainly on the pharmacy practice, then it becomes much easier for us. If we focus on pharmacy practice, out of 50%, if we can score around 40% from pharmacy practice or 45% from pharmacy practice, then only we need to score around 15 uh, or 20% from the other component. Okay? Then they will start focusing mainly on the pharmacy practice. Okay, So that's the major mistake that the candidates say do here. Okay, So now let's have a look to uh, individual uh, components and uh, I will explain you in detail. So um, like where uh, we need to focus and uh, which components are more important for the examination. Okay. So the first one is about the 10% weightage. This 10% weightage is for the behavioral, social aid and administrative pharmacy. So where we will be having the subjects like the biostatistics, pharmacoeconomics, Canadian healthcare system and pharmacy management. Okay. So these are all uh, the subjects like, for especially for overseas pharmacists, those who have studied in India or Pakistan or any other countries all over the world other than Canada. Okay? So for them, these subjects become a big challenge because they don't know about the Canadian healthcare system. Okay? So in, and even in, in, uh, in the pharmacy levels, in the bachelor uh, level in India and in other countries, so they don't study about the biostatistics. They won't study about the pharmacoeconomics okay, and pharmacy management. So all these are the completely new subjects for them. So that's why most of the candidates, they will try to completely avoid this 10% of the subjects. So they think that, okay, it is just 10%. So let's uh, skip this 10% okay, and focus on the other components. But that's the main mistake here. Okay? So if we study the biostatistics, so you will get at least five to uh, seven questions from the biostatistics in your examination. So, and the basic things that they will ask in the biostatistics, like which test is to be applied here? So which test is applied uh, in this uh, scenario, like either the chi-square or the student t-test or the ANOVA, so which is applicable uh, test uh, in this particular case study, okay? So it is quite easy, like if we learn it once, okay? So it is quite easy. And for all the subjects like biostatistics, pharmacoeconomics, Canadian healthcare system, and pharmacy management, so once if we learn, 
And if we do uh, just once or twice uh, revision, then uh, they are quite easy and simple questions. They won't try to twist much in this uh, part. So easily we can answer them, okay? So my advice is you should never skip this 10% of the uh, component. So we must focus on the statistics, economic, Canadian healthcare system and pharmacy management and try to get as much score as possible in this part. Then the second part is about the 15% weightage for the biomedical sciences, where we'll be having the biochemistry, molecular biology, physiology, immunology, and microbiology. Among the five subjects here, physiology plays a major role. Okay. So let's say, for example, if there are uh, total around 15 questions from biomedical sciences, out of 15 questions, at least five questions will be from physiology. And the remaining questions, eight to 10 questions will be from all the other four subjects. Okay. So the highest weightage will be for physiology. And if we are perfect in the physiology, then our pathophysiology part and uh, therapeutics part will also become much easier. So which will be covered under pharmacy practice. So we need to emphasize on the physiology part. Okay? And it means that we should not skip the other, other components like the biochemistry, uh, microbiology, immunology, and uh, uh, molecular biology. So all the other components also, like they will ask only the basic thing. They won't ask much in detail. Okay? So they will ask all the basic things. So once if we study, once if we practice, then easily we can score them. Okay, So it's easy to score all these subjects. So it means that the 25%, the 10% of the behavioral, social, and administrative pharmacy, and uh, the 15% of the biomedical sciences. Okay, So... Both together, it makes around 25%. So from this 25%, actually we must target to get at least uh, 15 to 20%. Okay, so we should never skip this subject. So these are the basic subjects, but we should target maximum from this subject because it is quite easy to target from this subject. Once if we study, then uh, it's quite uh, simple and easy to target from this subject. Okay. Then. The next one is around 25% weightage for the pharmaceutical sciences. So in pharmaceutical sciences, we have pharmaceutics and the drug delivery system, pharmacokinetics and biopharmaceutics. Okay. We also have the medicinal chemistry, pharmacology, toxicology, and biotechnology. So among all these subjects, the most important one is the pharmacology and toxicology. Okay. The highest weightage, the highest question that you can expect is from pharmacology and toxicology. Okay. And if you are perfect from pharmacology and toxicology component, it becomes much easier for you in therapeutics, that is in pharmacy practice. So if you are perfect in the pharmacology, then it also becomes much easier for you in therapeutic part. Okay. So focusing on pharmacology and toxicology is the most important one. And also on biopharmaceutics. So biopharmaceutics and pharmacokinetics. So here they will ask you few calculations related to pharmacokinetics. So you won't get much calculations here at this stage in pharmacokinetics. So only few calculations uh, you can expect from pharmacokinetic part. Okay. Then when it comes to the pharmaceutics and drug delivery system, like, like uh, you will get the questions on the tablets, capsules, emulsions, uh, syrups, okay? uh, suspensions, and so on. So where they will be asking about uh, the different type of the excipients that are added, what are the common lubricants that are added, and also uh, the other questions on uh, the different types of emulsion, what are the suspending agents. So all these are the common things that they will ask in pharmaceutics and drug delivery system. Then the next part is the medicinal chemistry. So in PBC, actually they don't ask much questions from the medicinal chemistry. Okay? So when compared to the Australian CAPS examination, in Australian CAPS examination, there will be 50% weightage for the chemistry, but in PBC, uh, just it is a minor component. So hardly you will get around three or four questions from the medicinal chemistry part. Okay? So it means that uh, we need not to emphasize much on the medicinal chemistry, but you need to learn about the stereochemistry. Stereochemistry is the major one. So let's say for instance, if there are three questions, out of three questions, definitely there will be two from stereochemistry. So I always advise the candidates to practice and to learn, uh, become familiar, familiarized with the stereochemistry component. Then biotechnology, uh, minor part. So 
you will get a few questions from the biotechnology as well. Then the main target topic. So as we have seen that the remaining topic is uh, the 50% is for uh, pharmacy practice. Okay, So pharmacy practice, it carries the uh, remaining 50% of weightage. Okay? But from pharmacy practice, even though how hard you try, it is highly difficult to score from this component. Okay? So difficult in the sense, like we can target up to 25% from the pharmacy practice out of 50. So we can target 25% from pharmacy practice okay? or hardly up to 30%, but not beyond that. Okay. So instead of spending more time on the pharmacy practice component, if we can divide our time, if we can spend our time on other components, like on biochemistry and pharmaceutical sciences on behavioral and social uh, pharmacy, so we can easily make up to 60% and we can clear the PVC exam, okay? So here is the target topic and the percentage that we need to target in our examination. So from pharmacy practice, we can target only up to 25% or hardly up to 30%, not beyond that, okay? So 25 to 30% if we can achieve in the pharmacy practice, so that is more than enough. Then from other components from all the other components that is from biomedical sciences, pharmaceutical sciences, behavioral, social and administrative pharmacy, from all the other components. So if you can score 35% okay, and this 25% to 30%, so it will easily make our final score to above 60% and we can clear this examination. Okay. So these are the few important things that the candidates, they need to know while they are preparing for the uh, PVC examination. So don't focus mainly on one major component, that is the pharmacy practice. So also focus on other, um, other components like biomedical science, pharmaceutical and behavioral, social and administrative pharmacy. So to make sure that we need to cross that 60% overall, uh, overall score. Okay. So the advantage in PVC is Okay. So in PVC, they are not assessing in individual components. So there is no such uh, target that you need to score uh, out of out of uh, in pharmacy practice out of fifty percent of the questions. You must score like sixty percent from pharmacy practice. So there is no such type of component based target. Okay. Whereas in case of CAPS examination, Australian uh, Australian CAPS examination, so in each component you must uh, get fifty percent of but in PBC overall, overall uh, in all the subjects together, uh, in the final score you must get sixty percent. Okay, so such type of the individual component scoring is not uh, required for PBC. So that's the advantage. So that's why, if we can plan on more on all the subjects, so rather than focusing on one of the components, so if we can focus on all the other components, then it becomes much easy to clear this examination. Well, thanks for watching this video and uh, at Elite Expertise, we are going to launch our first batch of PVC uh, from 28th of July, from coming 28th of July to 24. So, uh, and our program is designed in such a way that we are going to cover each and every aspects of uh, the examination. So we are focusing on each and every component so that the candidates can score easily 60% in their final examination. So. Uh, you guys can join the orientation session which is going to be held on 28th of uh, July and thanks for watching this video and also uh, please don't forget to subscribe our YouTube channel. Thank you so much.